Let's take a look at the Revit interface. There are many different areas of the screen and they each have different properties. In the top left corner we have the application menu. This is where we access commands like open and save. Along the top of the screen is the quick access toolbar. This has a lot of useful commonly used buttons like the measure tool and the section tool. Underneath all this is the ribbon toolbar. This is where we find all of the tools to add, edit and adapt our building elements. This toolbar is separated into different tabs which group the tools into different categories. In the structure tab you'll find the tools for creating beams, walls and columns. In the annotate tab you'll find tools to add text, detail and tags to your views. On the left hand side of my screen is the properties palette. This will show you information about whatever element you currently have selected. If you have nothing selected, it will show you information about the view that you're in. You can move this window around, but I choose to dock it on the left hand side of my screen. If you have one, you could choose to put this window on your second monitor to maximise the space available in the main window. At the top of the properties palette is the type selector. This is where we can change the family type that we're using. On the right hand side of the screen is the project browser. This shows you everything that's in your project. You can see all of the different views, as well as schedules and legends and sheets. You can also see which families are loaded into the project. They will all be on this list. The main area of the screen is the workspace. This is where you'll see your current view, whether that's a plan view, a section, a 3D view or even a schedule. At the bottom of the workspace is the view control bar. From here we can control the scale, the detail level and the crop boundary as well as several other view properties. At the very bottom of the screen is the status bar. This is a very useful feature as it will often give you a clue as to what you are supposed to do next. For example if I select the wall tool I might not know what to do but if I look at the status bar it's telling me. First it says click to enter start point and then it says click to enter end point. Navigating the Revit model is easy if your project browser is showing. It's easy to close it by mistake but if you can't find it, you can always get the project browser back by going to the View tab, clicking User Interface, and then make sure there's a check in the box next to Project Browser. If I want to navigate around my model, I can choose to open different views by double-clicking on them. I can navigate to what Revit calls my default 3D view by clicking on the House icon in the Quick Access toolbar. In my 3D view, I can pan around by holding the middle mouse button, I can zoom by using the scroll wheel and I can rotate by holding down the shift key while I use the right hand mouse button to rotate the model. If I have an element selected when I rotate, the rotate will be centred on that element. Any time that I click on a model element I can see its properties in the properties palette. Any properties that are in the properties palette are instance properties. Can you remember what instance properties are? Instance properties are things that are different for each model element or instance. For example, these two columns have different base and top levels, but they're the same column section. If I want to see or change type properties, I have to choose Edit Type from just under the Type Selector. In here, I can see all of the type properties for my column. So I can see that this rectangular column is defined by two dimensions, B and H, which define its size on plan. If I wanted to edit these, I could do so here, and that would change every single column of this type that has been placed in the model. That's because these are type properties.